Hello there, everyone, and thank you for joining me here. This is our new campaign. And you know the last piece of your promotional playing is Call Me, but a very specific Svetlana Stelina. Now, I'll be honest here, trying to get S S uh, Svetlana Stelina is not super easy. And I might have played, played this here before, but I kind of don't think I have. But at the same time, uh, we're just going to go along with her and we'll see what happens with Restoring Order. I think I read these ones before, but that's alright. The Republic has managed to sail out most. Uh, the most dangerous sea. Yet we're not out of the storm yet, for internal enemies still roam within our borders just as we march to war with external rivals. Caution is the order of the day. Anti-democratic extremists have been severely hurt by repeated losses. As a set up to destroy regional rivals, we must also keep up with the pressure and domestic threats. For this task, we can thankfully bring to bear the full legal apparatus. Police officers, judges, as well as lawmakers can work in coordination to stamp out poisonous elements. Final victory at home is within a grasp. Once its rears are secured, the army of the Republic will be able to secure or begin its march to restore democracy to all of Russia. Root on paramilitary commanders. Ooh, that can hurt us. Could if I have the unwritten rules. Admin efficiency gets worse, which I don't like. And gets even worse again. Yeah, centralizing redistricting. You get more military professionalism into arms. Decreases its effect. Root, out, root them out. Arrest sources of knowledge or information. I think it went this way too last time, but I, I don't... Ooh, remo remove a place for all of us. Ooh. Ooh. But, you know, as much as I don't like this one, it doesn't hurt us that terribly, so we're going to go with Root Out Paramilitary Commanders just because I don't want to hurt our administrative efficiency. The Army of the Republic has long been a pit of snakes. Political extremism within the officer corps was impossible to root out without fatally weakening the democratic government's grip on power. Left to their own devices. Uh, the F word and communist officers were free to aid anti democratic street gangs. Some did so by propagating their doctrine to rank and files of the army, others used their tactical training to lead street gangs from the shadows. And finally, some served in the training of paramilitaries. With a far right and far left waning in influence, we can finally remove the from service officers and commanders who carry the taint of extremism. The loss of experienced personnel will be worth it, as the central government's domestic position is reinforced and the soldiers march out with unity of purpose to face the enemy. Nice. But yeah, trying to get Svetlan is pretty. Not easy, and I did have to use cons commands to make sure we could force it through. That was my main thing, just forcing it through no matter what. Oh, we can't even do that one anyways. Oh, where do we... Oh. We're social nationalists. Wait, what? Um, did she even have any... Yeah, as you can see here. I'm not very popular, but whatever. And we have to wait for the loop of bombing terror stop to stop, but, you know, whatever. Um, also... I don't think we got the whole tree here that has that gives us like the coup that happens and stuff like that, but oh well, whatever. Um, uh, arrest sources of information. Many ordinary citizens cooperate with extremists, whether out of greed or ideological zealotry. Now that the judicial system is firmly under control and that the extremists in politics have been shackled, we can crack down with impunity on collaborators and fellow travelers. The Republic must cast a wide net to arrest all those who contributed to the government's enemies. Those who broke no laws will be intimidated into break taking plea deals. Personal finances will be audited. We shall process methodically until all are guilty or all betrayed their former collaborators. There should be justice for the victims of political violence. Not bad. Also, we do want to raid, but we already had a successful raid, apparently. <clears throat> Poverty's in a little better for us, which is very, very good. And, happy August. The remnants of the opposition. If you want to read this, please go ahead. Make an example? Yes, please. The Republic does not condemn its citizens to death lightly. However, there must be a retribution for those who have conspired to end the nation's freedoms and tolerance. Those who have infected Sictivkar with violence must face justice. Those who have robbed their fellow citizens, those who have injured the innocents, those who have killed under the influence of extremism, all must see their sins weighed and face the risk of the greatest retribution of all. The worst of the worst shall be executed. We do not have pity for traitors, and their deaths will hopefully inspire fear among their surviving allies. The Republic's justice is eternal, and its vengeance shall not spare the wicked. Classic? Sure, why not? It's fine. They do have nine divisions, which is actually not bad. But, we gotta come down here and uh, just look at these guys. We don't have that much political power, but whatever. We'll do the best we can. <coughs> Economy wise, we still have a yearly deficit, which is not uncontrollable, but, you know, it could be better. And state weapon regulations. Uh, the proliferation of weapons in the Republic is done much to let our enemies or, uh, operate without fear of retaliation. When a police action against a far-right contraband ring runs the risk of a violent gunfight against the equivalent of a platoon of soldiers with automatic rifles, hitting political criminal gangs hard becomes impossibly difficult. The central government will introduce the first ever weapons regulation law to the Republic. Law will explicitly ban the possession of heavy weaponry, equally under target will be the automatic weapons as well as large magazines. We we'll use this law as both a carrot and a stick. Extremists will be able to sell the weapons in a government buyback if they wish to quit politics, and those who hold it on to their legal weapons will break, be 
breaking the law must be easy to arrest. If you want to be opposition data, please go right ahead. And the report's concluded, of course. Nice. Svetlana Bokharina. Also, Zidana died. Or he cut him off. Please be good. And ban unregistered armed groups. Beyond limited access to weaponry, the government will also legislate paramilitaries out of existence. Outside of the Army of the Republic, the police, as well as a few state-backed militias, belong to a group that will be a criminal offense. Those who cling to the paramilitary membership will be arrested on terrorism charges. Those who resist will be shot. The designation of all those organizations as terrorist groups would also hit their finances, starving them out of money. Violent confrontation need not every one of them. As a dwindling, meddling procedure of paramilitary sees, these group hemorrhage members and morale. Okay, launch operation against them as well, I guess. Very successful, good. Thank you for about that, please go ahead. Thank you. And we'll go with, what do we have here? Uh, deficient administration, oh boy. The records will probably be good. Next. Very nice. Treasure, record of the past, very good. Can we wise, that's why I'm not too, too worried about it. And there you go. Helps out a little bit more, which is very good. But what do we have here? Oh, yeah. Lev, Serov, all good stuff. Out of order. As far as long as we've been called the Sick Car Home, our arrivals of Mod Comey's Republic is a house of cards. Top and rebuilt by ideologies or ideologues constantly. It's streets red with the blood of a slowly dying government. No more. We've brought the Republic to order. Political extremism has been quelled, and peace and justice are the order of the day. So my question Comey continuing to call itself a place for all. In the light of this quelled extremism, we stand by this statement for all are welcome into the House of Governments who will respect its institutions. Secret hospitality is a two way uh, street, though, or a two way obligation. Being rid of now are those who call and threaten others in our midst, we can encourage to work on making the Republic a refuge for all Russians in this age of strife. If you want to read about pursuing Seslov, please go right ahead. Nice. Locate him, I and we definitely, definitely, definitely need more command power, but whatever. Close it to that because I don't like that one. To order. Which would be great. Ooh, anything up here? Not really. Um, yeah. We get lose a lot of political power, but we get more organization stability. If you want to read this stuff, please go ahead. Bing. Bong. Boom. Peace for now. Perhaps just a passing dream. The streets of our capital are quiet for once. A few families are seen walking about where, about where once thugs man barricades and checkpoints. The police reports echo this anomaly. Police seem to have descended on a sick car. Fragile peace, perhaps, for the demons of civil strife might return if we're not vigilant. A fragile peace. If our rivals in the Western Russia try to enter democratic experiment, a peace, nonetheless, and one we intend to defend by force. Citizens, much remains to be done. We must be vigilant, so that our nation's future is not dashed against the rocks of war, nor the chaos of internal conflict. And we're going to have a lot of lag very, 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 quite soon. Um, anything else we can do? We can just sell this stuff here. I like doing external investments, but I want to wait till we get a little larger before we even do that. There comes a time. Um, if you're wondering about that, please go ahead as well. Nice. We just need a lot more command power. A crap ton of command power. To order and peace for now. How is this looking like? It's looking even better. Cover rate is not great, but still. And a new Democratic Foundation. The Republic, once seeing its electoral system frayed and closing down due to extremism, must see democracy flourish again. Regenerating the interests and trust of our citizens having the democratic process will be tough, especially coming on the tail end of our efforts to end political extremism once and for all. We must accomplish this nevertheless. And the Democratic Center's powers will be assured. I think overpower to design electoral districts now that they've been sanitized will help restore confidence. As well as will the ability to call snap elections to remove governments that are wildly unpopular with the electorate. Fine propaganda campaigns extolling the virtue of engaged citizens will hopefully draw crowds once more to polling stations. Well, at least that's a hope and idea. Um, I don't think we can raid anymore right now, so we can wait. Um, let's do Shevarich. Shevarich. Right, Divider, which actually wasn't that laggy. That's very surprising. It's very... Un oh my goodness. Oh. I if you remember that, please go ahead. Nice. Yeah, actually, that this is very, the very first time I think I've ever seen this, um, where when the German successor states spawn and the Civil War spawns, it has not lagged. Like, it, it, it hits the can really hard. I'm not sure what can means, but whatever. Uh, anything else right here? Oh, more divisions. Nice. Um, I want you to be offensive, yeah. Well, if we have command power for it. Uh, how much anti- Oh, we don't have any anti-tank. I was going to throw some anti-tank on every division, but we got to wait. Uh, the Republic saved. <clears throat> Rejoice citizens for the Republic has been saved. It has taken our government everything to prevent our young nation's fall into extremism. But now that dust has been settling, our political system has been repaired, and we stand united to face against the wider world. 
Soldiers and leaders that once had been only concerned with surviving in just another week are now free to turn towards the rest of Russia. With the end of the anarchy, many factions will no doubt attempt to impose their control on the lands of the former Soviet Union. Our republic must stand ready to expand outward in order to crush extremists and find new allies for the fledging nation. Uh, we have crushed the fascists and communists and Comey, and this experience shall serve us well. If you want to read about at the service, please go ahead. More political power and stability. Well, oh, sign us up. And there they go. It's been a long time since, at the time of this recording since I've actually done anything like Rubiaka. Mm. Uh, done like the South African War. It's, ever since like new about new set backward two box series, it's become less fun, at least in my opinion. To do that one. Ah, uh, what is this? Ensuring democracy, the first villager to see the deputy sweeping the streets is a child of perhaps 10 or 11 years. His steps echo down the cobblestone path well before he reaches a sweating. A uh, suit-clap man struggling with a broom, he stops for a while in whatever passes for stupefaction in the youth, makes a face and walks away. The deputy calls after him, have a good day. The government's here for you if you need anything. The next few villagers arrive all at once in a station wagon almost falling apart with rust and disuse. The deputy calls out to them too, shouting, have a good day. The government of Comey works only for you. Muted laughter resounds from the car's cabin and a face reaches out from what must have been a window. Have a good day, deputy. Must be a lonely day in the office, yes? The deputy beaming turns to reply, but the station wagon's low growl cuts him off before he can say anything. He looks into the massive cloud of smoke, still smiling, and carries on. So it continues through the morning, the sweeping of stray leaves in the urban car of Jacomi's 57th district in the giant piles, and the disposal of these piles into burlap sacks. People stare curiously, once or twice visitors ask for signatures, some of which the deputy is only too happy to provide. Always reminds people he meets to vote he meets to vote and keep the government accountable, something which they can also fulfill by writing to himself. As noon towers over the Comey, the deputy assembles into his office, nearly tripping over the carpet. The smile disappears from his face, glowering. He begins the laboriously type of transcript of the day's endeavors, starting with the number of people he has greeted and the number of we believe in the Comey Republic badges he has given out. Nearly breaking the typewriter with his hammy fingers, he writes, Day 1 publicity campaign complete. Assemble the armories. Let's do infrastructure. Now that a map of Sictacar no longer resembles a chessboard of districts held by a, a protean mass of paramilitaries of varying alliances and allegiances, we're free to roll out unifi unified infrastructure plans. Places where the government has not dared to send officials and ages can be finally be assessed, approved, and perhaps even taxed. The least controversial move will be the first to improve the infrastructure in and around Sictacar. Crumbling roads and buildings do not inspire much hope that the government is looking after the common man, nor are they much hope to the economy attempting to climb out of years of stagnation. Apologize. I apologize if I'm reading very fast, it's just that's who I am. I'm a very fast reader. What else do we have here? Anything else here? Can we get more loot? Yes, please. Be nice. Assemble the armories. With the end of political violence, many armories and weapon caches that were under the control of extremist elements are now open to access. It'll take some time to count everything, but already the available rifles and support equipment can be pressed into service to help equip the Republican army further. Securing as many weapons as possible also help us douse the embers of political extremism. The days of private militias holding onto weapons stockpiles are finally coming to an end. From now on, the government shall decide what, who has access to the military hardware, and that's that. I'd love to raid Plusk again. Actually, are we, can we train? Yeah, we can train one division. That's nice. What are we looking at? Like, missing? Ooh, we have nothing for Artie. We did give a three up here, which is pretty nice, but, you know. We definitely need a lot of guns. Lots and lots of gunnerinos. And command power. And war support. We just need a lot. Tabrisky fled the country. Shevervich has been arrested. As well as Suslov. <clears throat> Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Point one nine. You know what? It's the cost of doing business. It's alright. Actually, don't we need 20. We need 20. Come back out. The Army of the Republic. We'll go down here, too. New election cycles? Ooh. Ooh, Abbott efficiency? Let's do this one first. Formalize the claims. Our enemies in the revolution are front and call successionists and traitors. The Tsar and Vyak and his cronies dismiss us as a sectificar clique. Others use their official name of the Komi Republic, seeing as a mere local curiosity standing in their projects of uniting Western Russia. Those names will be relegated to the past. Our government prepares a new declaration announcing that we alone have the legitimacy to rule all of Russia as a Russian Republic. All of our institutions are to change to reflect this. Territory occupied by our military will be merely be territory returning to a rightful rule. Diplomatic annexations will be undertaken under the auspices of bringing rogue provincial governors and usurpers back to, under the fold of the reborn Russian Republic. Our regional rivals are not likely to take this seriously, as such. We must be ready to prove our claims through force of arms or through the silver tongue of our diplomats. Nevertheless, the world shall know that the Russian Republic, killed by the Bolsheviks, is, of course, back. Just quick, please. Thank you, sir. I just want to beat up communists. That's all I want. Social nationalists. That's going down every day. Which I guess makes sense. PSD. And what, what's our government economy? Free market capitalists right now. There's no free market capitalists? Okay. Formalizer claims. 
New election cycles would not be bad, especially for stability, but we're already pretty good. The army of the Republic, though. Comey always had, on paper at least, a strong army. Since its inception, the Republic has remained free from foreign encroachment by the quality of soldiers in the field. Also, before we get going, let's do that too. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, this has not always been evident of the man in the sick of car streets, riddled with corruption and factionalism, with the entire units either underpaid or overpaid to ensure political reliability. The army of the Republic has always been perceived as a right mess. A significant fraction of its total strength is composed of militias and men outside the regular command structure, finding only in dire emergencies now that the Republic desires to expand outward. A more regular state of affairs is needed. Two proposals have been caught up on the army reforms, and it's important to decide rapidly on which one the Republic prefers. Blowing up our enemies, that's what I prefer. Oh, better infantry, nice. Good, very good. Um, we might as well do that too. Formalize claims, nice. Perform a true army versus keep the militia structure. I don't like this one. You get quite a bit more war support, but rapidly improve is so good. Oh, they gifted. I mean, I always do this one. It just makes more sense. I will, I really want, I want to try this one sometime, but no. It just this is better. Reform a true army. The first faction proposes scraping every militia and integrating their men into the regular army. This will be a daunting undertaking, stretching our current army structure to the breaking point. Countless militiamen will have to be screened for political extremism, and those that don't make the cut will no doubt be angry at losing their job and weapons. Completing the reform will take time and effort, but the WRF has demonstrated in the right 50s. A regular army can achieve miracles when properly organized. The Republic must end the militias if it's to be safe to be internally and externally. I'm pretty sure I already... Okay, this doesn't make any sense. You can't... Excuse me, sir. Uh, what? Well, let's save it. Um. Okay. Can I still select it if I do decision on no checks? Because these are all the stuff I had to use to see if we could uh actually yeah you know, get this get Svetlana Stalina. So especially like raising confidence and and her raising her influence. So um decision dot no checks no, decision dot there we go. Can we still... No, that's... That's so glitched. Well, that's stupid. That's really, really not cool. What happens if we what, let that happen to us? Army of the Republic, of course. New Republican Army? Commander Leonetti stares doubtfully at his map. The plastic waterproofing has gotten so worn in places that interpreting the little dots he has drawn on it is a pointless exercise, and the woods around swarm with mist. That's good the stars he normally use for navigation. The compass is no help either. Half the down compass and headquarters barely works anymore, and this one's given up the ghost of the schedule. <clears throat> Did we lose anything here? I don't know. Down on the stupid impromptu exercise, S Sergeant Guzman snarls. Always a loyal uh, follower, but never quite afraid to let his superiors know what he thinks. Leonity doesn't reply, staring only at the mitts. There are some, count some boundaries it would be thoroughly inappropriate to cross. The signity of command is one of them. As he glares into the mist, something clicks. Those faint figures aren't trees, they must be here nearby hills. And if he can make out the hills, then he scrambles at his map, checking the faint color lines. If he's lucky, he can get the shape of two line marks down, one like the shape of a little loaf of bread on the elongated ridge. Leonetti is a grown man of 37 years, and he's been in and out of the barracks for his entire adult life. It all takes all he has to keep himself from solving. He knows for the first 78 hours where he is going, his salary and Kuzmin's are safe. Leonetti and Kuzmin stumble into finishing ground five hours after that misty help. They're among the 3,000 commanders of a total of 7,200 who will survive without ejection from the Republican army of Comey. With the army retools and rebuilds itself, it begins to look less like a rabble, more like a fighting force, and it prepares to cast aside the boring, easy business of border defense for far, far larger horizons. Magnificent display. As much as we learn here. Uh, we'll need that manpower. As much as I want that army XP, we need that. It's not very much, but still. Apologies for using consequence, but, you know, this is kind of dumb. Well, no more trying to raid against Plesic, because they are glitched. Number divisions too for now, just because we are approaching our limit, upper limit, for this up here too. So, oh, there they go now. That's so stupid. Get something's one hundred twenty percent. Not bad. Going to get two. Um, hmm. Mission to Vlogdom. The West General Ivanov maintains a careful position of army neutrality in Vlogdom. In the aftermath of the front's collapse, the good general decided that spilling the blood of Russian civilians for ideological squabbles was simply not worth it. Vlogdom has kept, uh, kept a core to bemused relations with Komi's unstable republic. The Western Junta has long appreciated Komi's republic uh, or policy of welcoming all while disliking the pl resulting political violence. <clears throat> With well, the newly minted Democratic government standing proud, it might be time to revisit the relationship. Comey and Vlog are both 
face. External threats from the front and from southern re regimes. A diplomatic mission has thus been sent to Vologda to offer a uh, treaty of peace and friendship between the two nations and elevate gifted officers. Dozens of smart and dedicated men have joined our army from their former militias and going to have a competitive period of political instability. One did not rise to the top without a good hand on their shoulders. The integration of these men has done much to soothe the concern of former militiamen about more purges and arrests of the militias. This also brought the treasure of institutional experience. Variants have fought in the West Russian War, or up defend Comey's auxiliary militia are now pouring into our army and helping her define its doctrines for the better. Which is, of course, a good thing. Point two is not great. We definitely need more divisions. So we have seven divisions. There are 12 combos, which are okay. We have three di two divisions, not three, but two, with some militia, well, not militia, but standard infantry and some elite infantry. And there we have an IFV. So. And what do they say? They will accept. Great news comes from the city of Alagda across the frontier. A diplomatic mission which we recently opposed has been enjoyed great success. It seems that the regime ruling the town is supportive of our efforts to create bilateral relations and has welcomed the mission with open arms. Now we can initiate trade or resources. <clears throat> uh, and arms for the benefit of both of Alagda and us. As well as discuss our future steps now that the talks with them are not a rare occurrence but a possibility every single day. We must not uh, forget that the goals of this diplomatic effort do not stop at manner trade uh, deals and vaguely cordial relations. The optimal outcome will be for Comey and Vilok to enter into a full alliance determined to protect themselves from the surrounding enemies that may appear. They may be socialists, monarchists, or fascists, but no matter what, the two states will have to band together to fight them off. Of course, if we gain a diplomatic sway, we could even use this to our advantage in expanding. But for now, we could even use. Uh, but for now, our ambassador is doing excellent work at uh, cooperating with authorities and gaining the trust, just as planned. If you want to be an alliance for peace, please go ahead. But. Establish economic ties. As Vlog and Comey get closer, their respective economies continue to rise from the decade of bombing and warlordism. Trade links that had already been significant during the anarchy are being strengthened by the date in this light. It's essential for the official trade policies to be established between the two allies. Strategic industries from both sides will be integrated, helping both Comey and Vlog to increase their military readiness. Joint investment schemes have also been discussed to help lift up the civilian economy of both nations. Since here, Bukharina. Bukharina. Good, good, good. Freedom of movement. The frontier between the warlords of Russia often is more of a theoretical concept, consisting of a long range of military checkpoints and demilitarized zones plagued by bandits or lawlessness. While in theory there had been no law prohibiting movement between Vlog and Comey, in practice doing so required several levels of military approvals for private citizens. Traders have long been used to carrying their stacks of documents at military checkpoints. A new treaty is in the works, providing legal rights so Vlog and Comey citizens to cross a border unimpeded. There's no doubt how friendship and partnership blossom among our nations. It's a great thing. As we'll keep one on industry pretty much during the entire time. Like, we really need to keep focusing on industry. Ooh. Look at that debt. Keeps going up. Not bueno. 104%. If we can integrate them, that'd be great. Where was it? Gethsemane. Bukharina, uh, not to the... Oh, actually. Yeah, I think I read this one before, too. If you want to read about this one, please go ahead. Who was it that betrayed her? We have a lot of stability. My apologies for not reading those, but... Um, it is what it is. Bukharina has been arrested in a prison. Nice. Plastic is dead. We have economic ties. And we have Zukov up there, which is going to suck. Mutual defense. While the Logan might not be totally ready to join any of our future wars of liberation, the generals have agreed to strong mutual defense treaties. In the event of an attack on one side, the other is an expected to declare war on the invaders. This defensive alliance will free us much needed resources for the Comey Republican Army. Contingency plans for the defensive wars will no longer use the hypothesis that the Comey Vologda frontier requires constant military defense. Likewise, the Vologda army will be free to tend to its own business, confident in the safety of its eastern flank. Which is a great, 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 great thing. Which this is not. Oh my goodness. Um, I guess we could do this part right now. It would help us just ever so slightly. We have enough political power for it, so I'm not too worried if we do this. But... Mm, I'll do it once, why not? Doesn't do that much. Actually, that did a lot. Holy crap. We were over 100%, now it's 82%. Actually, that was worth doing. It's my opinion. For now. And also, we're building up those roads. Again, we could be building this stuff up, but this stuff is just going to take so long to get done anyways. I don't really care at this point. Could use more production units, though. Between three folks. 
Citizens, my friends, our republic is in grave danger. To the north lies a remnant of the Soviet Union, haunted by its failures and angry at our independence. Even as we speak, the northern Red Army plots are undoing. To the south and east, things are not any better. Deluded Tsarist remnants wish to turn back the clock and reimpose the shackles of autocracy on our free citizens. In this project, they resemble our eastern neighbors. <clears throat> And Gainey, a theocracy blames Russia's woes not on the evils of German fascism, but on the anger of an unforgiving God. These madmen believe that only by subjugating Russia to the church's whims will the people be saved. The Republic rejects his madness. It's not a cabal of communists or tsarist military officers that can free Russia, nor can its salvation come from subservience to crazed monks. The only power strong enough to free Russia is its citizens. We must be on our guards. Extract from President Svetlana Stalina's speech to the Republic. More loot? I love loot. I love looting booties. And it went back up. But the growth is looking pretty good, honestly. Also, I did make sure that we're maxed out on growth, too. So, that's pretty decent. Pretty darn decent. Uh, just need more command power. I just want to raid all the time. Oh. Well. But yeah, because now I'm out of peace, which sucks, but whatever. Well, execute, negotiate. Ooh. I'm going to assume that they're going to negotiate with the Vlogdom. It's time to revisit a relationship with our Western neighbor. First visit of Vlogdom at the dawn of Unification Wars was mainly concerned with military matters for a young republic who was surrounded on three sides with dangerous regimes. Now that Comey stands tall, we must ask Vlogdom's government about deeper integration. The men of Vlogdom are famous for their opposition to wars of aggression fall against their fellow Russian citizens, and now we ask them to help in our grim unification of Western Russia. No matter how they felt about us before, the future of our two nations is a difficult decision for Vlogdom's leadership, but Russia's long divided must unite again. We can only hope that our neighbors understand this. Well, we'll see. And they point to join. Celebrate citizens of Comey today. Vlogdom joins the Republic. The op for merging. The administration has been welcomed by the semi-authoritarian governments and Vlogda. It seems that they still believe in democracy and as such, they quickly answered a request with a positive response. Quickly, the two militaries ended all limitations of travel between their respective territory and are working to tear down any border fences or checkpoints. The soldiers near the border have come together, celebrating the unification and meeting the other Russian brothers that are no longer enemies on the other side. Meanwhile, representatives from the military regime we have recently united with have arrived in Siktivkar, outlining the exact plans and process for the proper integration of their lands into the Republic. In the streets of both their own capital and Vologda, the citizens cheer on a government of the flag of our nation is waved proudly across our domain. Awesome. Merge institutions. Today's glorious day for Vlogdom has agreed to peacefully fuse with a nation. Soldiers that used to belong to the two nations have crossed the border not in conflict, but in celebration as politicians and commanders meet to discuss how best to merge both sets of institutions. Battles will be fought not between brothers, but between conflict and bureaucratic standards, as torrents of inks are spilled instead of blood. Paper pushers of both nations have sparred verbally while inwardly cheering at the peaceful nature of this conflict, and outside people celebrate the good news of the new republic. Awesome. Oh, oh. Oh, they... How do they win so fast? That was shockingly fast. Not bad. Still this, but it's almost nothing now, which is great. Yeah, this keeps going down, which sucks, but whatever. Ooh, build new schools. Where are we at? Passionately hidden. If you wonder about that, please go ahead. One cigarette can't hurt, right? Well, let's go with... Agriculture is not bad, too. So I think it's just unemployment, low subsidies. I get a free school. That's actually really... That's actually really worth it. A free school? Heck yeah. Defensive strategies. <clears throat> the work that began during the earlier forms of the Republican Army is now complete. The Army's commanders have presented to the civilian authorities several military plans as well as new doctrinal recommendations. The doctrinal ideals will help us modernize our army and train a new generation of soldiers and officers. The military plans provide a wide range of military campaigns against neighboring threats to the Republic's safety. It's likely that the civilian leadership will bring in few recommendations of its own, nevertheless. Both generals and politicians are confident in the Republic's capacity to destroy the closest foes. If you wonder about this, please go ahead, because I've definitely read this one before, too, so... I definitely read this one. So if you want to do that one, please go ahead. Plan black. That gives us time to like hang out. Um. Hmm. It gives us time to strike everyone south of us. But how strong is this? The longer we wait, the stronger they be they get. Six thousand manpower. Um, honestly, we can unite with and get all the military divisions too. Oh wait. <clears throat> That'll be good. As long as they don't go to war with us immediately, that'd be good. Uh, hmm. Well, let's save first. It's always good to make a save. Unlike in real life, at least we can make saves. Begin the talks, barking up the wrong tree. Oh, let's say now. They'll probably want to kill us, but whatever. 
Wat was het nieuw? We have almost 100 nail XP, even though we don't even have a boat. We could buy infantry equipment, but no, we're good. We actually have 5,000, that's actually pretty decent. Pretty darn decent. Now we can't afford to make these guys bigger just yet, but I'll make them bigger soon. Naval funding every day, huh? Nice. Oh, we get a free course and admin efficiency gets improved too. Just flipping awesome. Nice, good stuff, good stuff. Um, actually, how, how good are you? Your motorized, you're only 10 combat with. Can I get rid of something else? Yeah, that's okay. Division wise, it's not bad. Oh, we don't even have the template for it. What the heck? Artillery, we need some more motorized. Over here, you blue water navy, no one cares. Um, train, I guess, you know. Fill the gaps. Every eventuality has been planned. Every threat has been assessed. The Republic, surrounded by enemies, has turned every settlement into a castle to protect the flame of freedom and democracy. Now, citizens must become wards and fill the gaps in their defenses, lest the enemies storm through. A final call to arms has been issued. Last fit man can serve in the interior. Farmers can rejoin regional auxiliary militia to support the Republican army. If our nation survives this dark hour, we must stand and fight to arm citizens. I want to execute plan right probably fast, probably first. The Calumets have long sown the seeds of conflict within our nation, and for this I'll reap the tempest. The Front has squandered its opportunity to save Russia from fascists, and its arrogance, our Congress, has not sought peaceful unification with us, but instead sent thugs and radicals to undermine our democracy. We've expelled the Calumets threat from our republic, and now the Republican army shall eradicate the Red Menace from Western Russia. Even more organization defense? Yes, please. 14 divisions is actually very strong. Just as equal to them, if not better. Crush a church. And are they distracted? Even better. They have no production units. That's actually really good. Oh, can we do a warlord of them some more? We have a billion in GDP. Not bad. Happy September, everybody. Happy, happy September. This event might not be bad. Ooh. You know what? Let's do this one. Because we are already lacking some uh, power grid stuff right now. I don't want to spend too much political power, but you know, or it is what it is. That'd be good enough for now. Fill the gaps. Just plan white. That'd be a piece for this one, right? Probably plan black. If you worry about this one, please go ahead. They're going to die soon, anyways. Execute plan white, though. Uh, oh crap! Perhaps it's time. <clears throat> Or to, to the Tsar's credit that he's come back to Russia, rather than live a comfortable, soft life in exile. But the fall of the Union has seen the rise of a new generation of Russians, men and women who do not idolize the fabled past of Russian autocracy. The Tsar and his cronies wish not for citizens, but for slaves and subjects, abject and their subservience. The Republican army will instead show them the strength of the Russian nation for these difficult times and forge a new generation of standard bearers for democracy and decency. Arrival of the anti-communist guard, great news has arrived for our country. It is no secret that the war against the West, or WRF, for the vanguard of socialism in the region, has been a difficult struggle and one that has forced us to use everything we have at our disposal. After all, the front is the remnants of the old movement that of the days of the West Russian War and has finally decided to reclaim its place as a formidable power in the country. Thankfully for us, we have dared to challenge it. Uh, we found an ally in this hostile environment is the anti communist Volunteer Guard. Today, in one of the many recruitment centers we have set up to help in mobilization, over 100 men appeared seemingly out of nowhere, requesting that they participate in the struggle against the socialists of the WRF. When asked about their background, they made the situation much clearer. They're proud Russians from Olenega, the warlord state famous for resisting the front against all odds with Finnish support. It seems that General uh, Kurpichnikov's regime has been successful in cultivating the patriotic sentiment, of course. Our government and the high command have welcomed the arrival of the anti communist guard, and the special unit of Oneggans has quickly been organized and sent to the front. What well, may not be much, it's still useful in this war. Even the small self counts, and we're doing new election cycles as we are still waging war. Now the Republic's bases are strong and secure, so I'm turning to leave. New elections taking place in the rationalized and cleansed political arena will be scheduled. It's perhaps a risky move to entrust the fate of our project to the citizens. No risk here, however. And ruling in content of majority to further the end of small political cliques like our enemies in the far left and the far right intended to do. Our new electoral cycle is set to hold elections around the time our army and diplomatic service is set to have reunited many regions of Western Russia. Holding an election in freshly annexed or liberated territory must be difficult, but through this, our new citizens will see the commitment to democratic ideals. We'll get more stability, which would be great. We do you want to stave on some political power here, because we don't have a ton now. We did reconnect old Soviet power grids, but, you know, whatever. And this is where we're at right now. Casualty-wise, we've lost about 5,000... Oh, no, Vyaka's fighting. Oh, Vyaka's fighting them. What? 
Well, Viaka's got a Dynax. They have up to two divisions, which does suck. But they're kind of exposed on pretty much all fronts at this point, so. Which is a good thing. Keep them in place. I, I guess Viaka took these guys out too. I thought they were all the same, but whatever. So now we can come down here and do the execute plan wide block, but can't quite do that. Nice. We're almost at Arkhangosk, too. Which is a very good thing. Oh, I'll stick into that one. That sucks. Oh, well, whatever. Help me out. Help me out. There you go. Uh, good. Nice, good stuff, good stuff. Keep going on in. We're taking us there, which is fine. Go up there. Go the long way around, maybe possible. You guys are still struggling around here, which is fine. Our on goes is ours, and we got him. Nice. Integrate. Yeah, I'm going to mass integrate everything there. Prepare for a raid against these guys. Well, probably not, but uh, yeah, because next. Take a look. Not bad. Nine to twenty divisions though. That's gonna be kind of difficult. Um uh, actually plan black. If you're wondering about this one, please go ahead. They're already dead, so don't be looking thick. Hmm. Execute plan white. It's perhaps to the Tsar's credit that he's come back to Russia rather than live a comfortable soft life in exile. With the fall of the Union has seen the rise of a new generation of Russians, men and women who do not idolize the fabled past of Russian autocracy. The Tsar and his cronies wish not for citizens but for slaves and subjects. Objected in the subservience. The Republican Army instead will show him the strength of the Russian nation for these difficult times and forge a new generation of standard bearers for democracy and decency. Nice. Oh. Well, we need more command power. God dang it. How are we looking now? Oh, we have surplus. Are you kidding me, bro? Bruh. Well, I'll do that one in a minute. I want to get this one done first. I'd love to go to war with them at the same time, but whatever. I can't. Uh, man, if these guys all got focus trees, that'd be really cool. The Veta Republic. I says Axiom Grupa Muscovine. Baka. They do have a fight over a river, which is good to see. We got enough anti-tank that I feel competent in doing this as well. Good. It's greatly increased the cost of everything, but makes us way more effective in the field. Whoa, how are they winning against us? We've been raided, dear god, well... I wasn't expecting that. Guys, come on. Well, that's so stupid. You know what? We'll raid them until they die. Oh, uh, Yuli does it. Actually, that's not too bad. Dead GDP ratio. That's a bunch of crap. I'm going to slaughter every last Finn. So. They're going to regret doing that to us. Okay, no, this is stupid. You know what? I'm going to reload this so we don't lose and do so badly. Well, everyone, I I hate this. I hate this so much. There, there's no point fighting here because Vyak is just overpowered. I, I'm not. I'm done with like any struggles in combat and TNO. Like if there's a struggle, I I give up. Like I'm not going to bother anymore. Um, I don't want to be too negative, but like it's just not fun. Vyak is completely overpowered and doesn't want to do anything about it. Especially I didn't add these divisions already, but we were using 27 combat with. Infantry divisions with like nine infantry battalions and three artillery battalions. Couldn't do, couldn't do anything. Kept getting pushed back. It made no sense. Now not all of our divisions were full strength, but they were they were pretty darn full strength, and they were like using like 18 combo with divisions. Viaka needs to be taken down a couple more notches, but I'm not the devs. Our enemies are all lie defeated. The former people mill around. Some feel relief at their liberation. Others who struggle to make sure sense of the defeat of the Tsar communism or fanaticism. 
Our soldiers sacrifice is earning us room to breathe. Beyond our border look more dangerous. Ambitious tyrants dream of subjugating all the Western Russia to their whims. For now, however, we have some time to consolidate. Our enemies have held a great amount of industrial equipment, war supplies, and population. Already the Republic has gone from one of the weakest factions to one of the most powerhouses of Western Russia. If the soldiers have been allowed some rest, our poor bureaucrats are working triple overtime to assemble integrate mountains of resources into a system not designed for population and territory of that magnitude. As the work progresses, our integration of these new assets will give us a significant edge in the upcoming wars. We lost all that manpower literally for nothing because... The devs have a bias. Whatever. Room to breathe. Anti unity. Plan red, white, and black were about sheer survival. And now, <clears throat> uh, our public turns its eye to the south and seek not only to survive. But to thrive, projecting military power to quash dangerous warlords will greatly enrich our legitimacy, prestige, and resources on top of keeping us safer. Our general plans are not as detailed, this time around mostly based on the psychological profile of our enemies and theoretical conflicts using pre-anarchy maps of Russia. And if such, much of our newly acquired resources will be used to be dealing with whatever warlord has lasted long enough to become one of our neighbors. I don't understand why the devs have just made them so overpowered. I mean, it's one thing, usually it's Samara that was just a piece of garbage, but the WRF has a really good contender too, but like, I don't know why the devs have such a bone for Ryatka. Uh, I've heard about this, the fate of the generals, please go ahead, releasing them to the positions, release them now as generals, serve their time, well, we can use a war support, or at least now as generals. Um, I've heard, I'm pretty sure I've read all of these before, so I don't want to read a single one of these, so I'll let you guys read them if you would like to, but let's get much more loot. No one cares. Uh, there you are. Oh, there you go. You want to put that? Please go ahead. You want to put that? Please go ahead. Um, if you want to do this one? Please go ahead as well as negotiate with Bashkiria, but that would auto complete. And then, if you want to do about negotiate with Tartarstan, please go ahead. And if you're about Timur or Lauren, please go ahead as well. Because I know I've read that one before. Fine. Pilot. Complete. Consolidate. Gain resources. Most of our foes in southwestern Russia once have been defeated. The Republic stands triumphant once more. While the flood of new land to administer is not the exp exponential growth seen at the end of Plan Red, red White, and Black. And getting new conquests into a Republic has taken time. Now that our army is taking a well-earned rest, it's once again time for Republic servants to wander into these new territories and catalog everything. Industrial plants, cities, mines, population centers. All important resources for a growing nation. All his wealth is fed back into the Republican army, covering equipment and manpower losses, and giving our men new weapons. On oh, the horizon, new enemies. Our, en our men must be equipped for any eventuality. Sure, industrial preparedness? That's not bad. Let's do that one. Building an industrial economy from the ground up using factories taken over in wars and conflict is not a precise science. Many factories will that fall into the hands of our gear to produce the same things as other industrial areas in our possession. Russian world is usually function in an autarkic production system that sees everything crafted locally. Conversely, there are many goods that are produced nowhere, as the divided Russian territories do not possess an economy large enough for the things beyond basic military weapons. All this is beginning to change as we develop an integrated industrial policy prepared for a wide range of scenarios and needs. Once rare items are now being produced in large quantities as the Republic synergizes its various economic sectors to prevent any future penury of goods. Entire supply chains are comp of complex outputs are reappearing in Western Russia, which is a good thing. That itself, though, is not. Because if we try to attack, we're going to just straight up lose, because... Vyaka Boner. That's all I'm going to say. I call it the Vyaka Boner. Oh, let's see. Of all the deputies come from the former front territory, none has attracted as much attention as the recent election of Alexander Yakovlev. Affiliated with the DSMP, born a peasant family in Korolyovo, his father served as a Red Cavalryman. The Civil War became the leader of a small collective farm in his village. Yakovlev served in the Red Army during the German invasion and the horrors he experienced on the front, including almost losing an arm during the invasion. Not cool. With the collapse of the good old Soviet Onion <clears throat> and fracturing the country into multiple warlords, Yakovlev's life has been shattered as a strength and true of Marxist-Leninism right in front of his eyes. The destruction of his country and ideology forced him to look at his socialism through a different lens, one in which human happiness and quality of life triumphed ideological purity. After winning a difficult election in the recently conquered Akangos Oblast against the wishes of the DSMP establishment, he had established himself as a prominent freshman of the Oblast, intelligent and, or, intelligent and four-minded. It remains to be seen whether his left-wing conditions can gain him the political power he desires. More the merrier. How much are we going to struggle here? Usually Samar is not as bad as... Yaka, but you know, you never know.
Really? I kind of doubt we could do this, but we could try it. It says it's a lot of green, but you never know, really. I'm motorized. Come on. There you go, nice. Good. I'm not gonna. I want to say I'm not. I'm surprised. I'm not surprised uh, that we can't defeat these enemies. But you know what? Can you not? Can you stop it? Jesus Christ! Stop attacking! If I tell them to stop attacking, they don't stop attacking. I don't understand it. Sometimes it doesn't make any sense. It literally makes no sense. You tell them to stop attacking, but they're like, "No, oh, I won't keep attacking." Like why? I know it's not. It's not. You know, it's not unpaused, but still. Just for preparedness, yes. If you're gonna be that, please go ahead. How slow are you? My good god. Get down there, come on. Wow, that's an extreme amount of lag. This is the point where I get really pissed off about, you know, and how laggy it gets, but you know, the game has a lot of process, I get it. Go, 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 go. Cut them off at two points. Go, 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 go. Take the airbase so they can't use it. <clears throat> Good. No, you ding-dongs. Oh, my God. Come on. Go in. And you're going to force the attack. I don't... You know, if we lose division, so be it. I mean, it's not my fault at this point. If you guys at 40, like, 3 combat with cannot kill enemy divisions... When they don't have any supply. I mean, there's nothing I can do. There's literally nothing I can do about it. Hmm. First of all, that would be us. Awesome. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Why would it be us? Uh, sure, operational integrity. Operational integrity seeks to gather men and methods of doing and material into one unified whole. Mechanized tactics cannot exist without supply and logistical regiments. And once in the field, tanks and vehicles uh, are vulnerable to aerial attacks requiring aerial support of our own. The deployment of costly vehicles and their experienced operators relies on the assumption that neither man nor material are in danger of destruction. Thus, any deployment also requires an intel core. Operational integrity is thus a complex system of simple parts brought together to perform critical military tasks. Our soldiers and journals have integrated every lesson of the past conflicts into a new way of doing things. Long before a tank rolls out of new, our new factories, its purpose is well understood by our military. Our enemy shall learn to fear this oneness of purpose and action. Good. As it should. Go, go in. Go in. There you go. Thank God they're dead. I hate dealing with them so much. But much more Vyaka because they're literally just overpowered. I guess we unite them now, but let's finish the focus report. That's always good to do, finish the focus tree. Look at all this manpower. I mean, I hate this part of the Russia. It's so hard to fight them, but after you win here, like it, it, it's too, too easy to beat the other nations, usually. The other Russian nations. Not very balanced, but then again, Russia, who, who said Russia was balanced? Keep that one open. Can we keep up good? Okay. We we'll also need some logistic companies as well. Roads. We don't have enough grid power, which sucks. Um. Remember about Plan Brown, please go ahead. Nice. Consolidating the Republic. Well, military and diplomatic conquest of the shattered lands of Western Russia is all well and good. We must not forget the greatest civilian and bureaucratic apparatus that we must establish over new lands. 
With West Russia now in our control, the town is coming to begin the consolidation of the Republic. Running censuses, ensuring that our institutions can handle our new population, setting up supply lines, installing local leaders, and the other thousand other tasks needed to set up a sustainable state. Kill them all off, and then we're gonna get out of here. Supplies probably gonna be really bad. Faith and democracy? Uh, the Western census, yeah. Russia's a big place, and while we do not own anywhere near all of it, our Republic occupies a significant portion of the former Union's Latin mass. The teeming multitudes of people across our lands have not yet been counted or audited. In order for the democratic institutions and the basic social service to have a chance of working at all, we must make a created or detailed census of our population. Census takers, many accompanied by police, armed police, will be dispatched from regional centers in order to alleviate the issue immediately. But if you'd like to hear about better industrial equipment, please go right ahead. Good, good, good. Oh, actual one there, huh? Go, flippant figure. Okay, this is glitched. Oh my god. This happened earlier. What the heck? Okay, if that happens, I'm just gonna give our stuff, like, more treasure or something. This is stupid. Yeah, this... I don't understand what's wrong with TNO sometimes. You try to do well, but you just get screwed over sometimes by stupid stuff. The Iron Governor? Uh, I think I've read this one before as well. Cut to Chevy. Yeah, if you don't know this one, please go ahead. The Rising Star, indeed. Yeah, there's still stuff that, that is just broken in this. And I apologize for being so negative, but my god. Come on. Centered capital? Activate the factories? Yeah, that's not bad. Across the Republic, factories and other works at technological scale lie unused and unrepaired. For lack of expertise needed to run them. We must restore them at once, and soon the people of the Republic will be able to enjoy the prosperity that an industrialized economy shall bring. Cars once more shall roam the roads of Russia, our army shall be furnished with matching rifles, and our granite city's streets shall be lit with a constant incandescent electrical glow. Yeah, we're not going to waste time against them. Um, Orenburg? Well, I guess Onega's going to be a... Hopefully we can bully them and do that well with these guys, but we'll see. Because we're going to need a lot of artillery. We got enough support coming for now, which is nice. APCs, eh, honestly. Probably won't really need them. Probably could since we just improved that one. Get the peasants on board. The final most crucial part of establishing the new republic is securing our stores of food and setting up systems through which the peasantry may be able to once more prosper. For years, many within the republic, especially those in the frozen north, have struggled under the weight of food insecurity, poor soil, and bad weather. But the fertile lands of the south once more are being attained. We have now free to organize a better arrangement between the peasantry and our workers, ensuring that all may prosper and be nourished by the republic's golden wheat. I don't know if we actually beat him because I don't trust our army at all. We'll do a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm, though. We're down here. I know we're fighting a river, and they're only a, there's a lot of militia that they use. Which is fine with me, but still. How are we losing? How? Why would you choose this general? I, I And this is not a, a TNO thing. This is a Hoi 4 thing. They choose some of the crappiest generals whenever you do stuff like this. I mean, we still won, but, you know, I guess I'm just trying to find a way to complain, I guess. <clears throat> Center Capital. A sixty car, the capital of our esteemable republic, has served as well as the storied history as the most important city we possessed in the dark days of our origin. However, a dilemma faces the government, one that a simple matter of infrastructure, housing, and facilities with which to administer all of West Russia. The city of Yak and Samara, now that they are cleansed of Tsars and fascist influence, respectively have both been submitted as possible new capitals for the Republic, while Sikhtiv cars will love the time we very well have come for to move to more grandiose housing. Bring it on. Come raid us. I triple dog dare you, you son of a gun. Because we got to keep this amount of uh, divisions for now. Just because we all, we're going to have to murder every single Finn. So. 
and their enablers. Faith in democracy, though. Outside of the border of the Republic under Kerensky, Russia never knew the true democracy of the sort that was delivered to its people. Understandably and expectedly, the people are nervous and confused. As polling booths are elected, many peasants stay home or attempt to submit blank ballots, fearful of the watchful eyes of the no longer existent NKVD. This will not do. We must enact a comprehensive program of democratic education as well as communicate to the people true, well and truly what our goals and principles are. Democracy must stem from the people and may never bloom if the people do not have faith. Well, at least we have more growth now. Hey, we're, medi we're only mediocre. But we'll keep doing well. Even if we have to cheat. Because the game forces us to sometimes, you know. Oh, look at... Wait, what? Did we just... Wait, what? I guess we just got up to sea, huh? Okay. If you want to go that, please go ahead. Vyaka is a better site by far. No. No. Burn Vyaka to the ground. Seriously, burn it to the ground. I hate Vyaka with such a burning passion. It's not funny. Western... Joshua just sucks a fight, man. Um. How about the workers for now? How strong is Onega? Thirty-four thousand. One big old push should be able to hurt him pretty hard. Party machine, if you know that, please go right ahead. A beacon of liberalism. This would be really good to get. Uh, Breakthrough organization. We're gonna need that though right now. Nice. Prepare to raid. If we can hit him hard enough now, should do okay-ish. Staying put. If you're worried about that, please go ahead. A new beginning. Yeah, I need to give him an organizer. And quite offensive too. Good. You're still missing a lot of already, but but that makes sense. Hey, if you want to better improve academic base, please go right ahead. Yes, please. That's something to be celebrated. Very awesome. You know what? Get that one. Okay, I hate this so much. Okay, screw it. Go on, we unifies West Russia. Look at that. She's actually in color. Let's hope democracy returns. We have to wait for command power? I'm not gonna- no. There's absolutely not gonna be any uh, compromise here. Um, so basically we'll go to war with them. Oh, what's this? Sovereign Democratic Party? It has a reputation as an unsustainable Big Ten organization. What do you know by patriotism and hawkishness? Rather than coherent uh, policy positions or a single vision for Russia, however. With the election of presidents to lean into the position of president of the republic. At times going to put these concerns at rest in order to maintain her popularity and continue her administration, President Selena must find a way to keep the PSD. In line, will be forced to face the consequences of the split. It's really most united and is marginally left leading. Progressives. Nationalists. That's what I really care about. Poverty relief. Begin to improve. Agriculture mechanization. Begin to improve. Uh, hire foreign instructors. Yes, please. Expand state welfare program. Begin to slowly improve, but yes. Kurdish political thought is okay, but let's see, import heavy machinery, academic base, worker stuff would not be bad either. Yeah, we're going to do that one because it gives us a bonus to uh, the other stuff, but I think we're here, and the next episode will probably honestly be at war with Onego or even Finland, just kill them off anyways. What is the rod that here? Oh, look at that. Oh. But I think we'll end it there. If you enjoyed the video though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. As we'll probably struggle, but keep having a good old time. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.